If you ever look at a web address in your browser, it's almost always going to start with four letters. H-T-T-P. These letters stand for the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which is the foundation of the World Wide Web. As part of this protocol, three-digit numbers are used for communicating the status of requests and responses. These are known as HTTP status codes. If you've spent any amount of time online, you likely would have encountered one of these already. 404 which is used to describe an error in which a resource, such as a web page, is not found at the requested web address. This is just one of many status codes, and each one has its own unique meaning. If you're a technically minded person, you're likely familiar with a few of the more common ones, but you probably don't know all of them. And why would you? You're not a web browser. But if you were, then you'd know there's some really weird status codes out there. So we're gonna explore five of the weirdest status codes that exist including one so controversial, it should never have been created in the first place. The first weird web response is probably the tamest on our list, and it's status code 451. If you're not a web dev slash API engineer slash nerd, then it may be useful to know that there are some rules around status codes. Anything in the 400 range means that something went wrong, and it was your fault. The 451 status code stands for unavailable for legal reasons, and it's generally used when the website owner doesn't want to land in legal hot water. But it's apparently your fault that they would do so. How nice of them. You'll likely see this status code if you're in a country being censored, or if you're trying to access any region-locked content, such as TV shows from other countries. However, other times, it'll happen because the website owner doesn't want to bother with any legal red tape, such as compliance. For example, after the EU rolled out GDPR, web crawlers started to notice an uptick in 451s, which was likely from website owners not wanting to respect our privacy. We want privacy! We want privacy! Whatever the case, if you encounter this, you're probably going to want to use a VPN, but mostly just to protect yourself. Whilst status codes that fall in the 400 range are used for client errors, then those that fall in the 200 range are used to communicate that a request was successful. At least, that's the rule anyway. With all rules, there's always someone there to break them. And in our case, this is the status code 218, which stands for, this is fine. Inspired by perhaps one of the greatest memes ever created, this HTTP status code is used to bypass the default behavior of an Apache web server that is reverse proxying and has the proxy error override option enabled. What this option does is intercepts any responses from the upstream server that have an HTTP error code in them and discards their content, instead returning back the associated error page configured in Apache. If the server being proxied is aware of this, they may want to override this overridden behavior. And so the 218 this is fine status code is sent instead, which tricks Apache into not overriding the error and passes the content through to the client. I understand the need for this behavior, but the thought of returning a 200 status code for anything that's an error is kind of spooky, in my opinion. You're very unlikely to encounter this in the wild, however, unless you're running an Apache server as a reverse proxy. If you are running one and you see a bunch of 218s in the logs, well, now you know what's happening. Whilst we're on the topic of rules, there's another one. But this one is related to three-digit numbers. In fact, I'd argue it's more of a law of the universe at this point. This rule, or law, however you want to put it, states that any set of unique three-digit numbers will always contain 420, also known as 420's law. And weird HTTP status codes are no exception. The HTTP response of 420 stands for enhance your calm, and is used to request the client to chill the vibe out. Whilst not an official HTTP status code, that never stops us devs from implementing it. This code was mainly used as an HTTP status code extension by Twitter for use within their API. This code was more than just a meme, however, and was actually pretty useful. It would be returned whenever a client was exceeding any rate limits or quotas, basically by being unchill. Since then, however, it has been deprecated and the HTTP status code of 429, too many requests, has officially replaced it. If you ever do encounter this status code in the wild, however, then maybe calm down a little bit. Before we look at our next status, I quickly want to give a shout out to my two channel members, Bruno Beltran and Fernando Nakamuta. Thank you so much for supporting what I do and enabling me to bring educational content to thousands of viewers around the world. If, like Bruno and Fernando, you like what I do and want to support me, there's a link in the description down below.
We are now at our penultimate status code, and the only 500 in the list. If you're unaware, the 500 range is used for errors that have gone wrong on the server side, such as a failure or an internal network communication issue. Now, believe it or not, we developers have actually shown rather great discipline, or a lack of imagination, when it comes to 500 type errors. But there are a couple. So, my weird pick for the 500 range is 530, Site Frozen. No, 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 not the Disney classic. Frozen as in unresponsive. But not how you think. If it meant that the site wasn't working, well, this would make sense, but that's typically covered by a 504, which means gateway timeout, and is more applicable to how the internet actually works. So what does 530 actually mean? Well, it's used by a cloud company called Pantheon, and it occurs when they've actually locked down somebody's website on their platform, usually because a free trial has expired, or something. So as much as I wish this was related to that Disney classic, it is in fact just somebody who hasn't paid their bill. Therefore, if you ever encounter this, well, just let it go. Finally, we get on to our last, but certainly not least, weirdest HTTP status code out there. In fact, this one is so weird, it's managed to inspire controversy within the developer community, setting off years-long discussions and debate, and an actual social justice movement. This status code is the infamous HTTP status code of 418, which stands for I'm a teapot. Yep, that's right, I'm a teapot. Whilst not an official code, it's used by web servers to respond in a tongue-in-cheek manner. Basically, it's used to tell the client that what has been requested of the server is not its intended use. You can think of it as a situation where you've given a request to a teapot to brew coffee, and the teapot responds politely by telling you, the client, that, well, it's a teapot. Status code 418 was created back in 1998 as an April Fool's joke, and was meant to be very short-lived. However, there's one final rule that I think is worth mentioning in this video. That rule is, don't give developers bad jokes. Unfortunately, this rule was broken, and just like recursive acronyms, we took it too far. Now, the HTTP status code of I'm a teapot is supported by some of the major HTTP implementations out there becoming unofficially official. At one point, there was an attempt to reclaim the status code of 418 for use in an official official capacity, which of course did not go down well at all. Developers are pretty protective about our overused bad jokes. This attempt at reclamation started an official counter initiative known as the Save 418 movement. And with some heated debates on GitHub, the movement was successful. And 418 has been officially accepted as a joke that has gone on for too long. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new about some weird status codes. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.